Glory to God, brothers and sisters. So I made a Facebook post yesterday. If you're friends with me on there, you would have saw it. Um, asking if anybody else, because we have, has seen a rise in witchcraft attacks on your lives, your family, and especially in your dreams. So I want to talk about that. Um, and, you know, I'm also, it's very easy to tell, but the occult and witches and warlocks and stuff, they're very, very organized. They're very, many of them are very dedicated. And in that respect, the church could uh, take some notes and become more organized, more dedicated, more in unity. Um, they're against us. We need to be in unity against them and under the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter whatever we believe. But uh, I've noticed it. there'll be like the seasons of blessing, of peace, of goodness, um, uh, and not a lot of problems, just normal everyday things, whatever. But this week, the past two weeks, since the summer solstice, which the summer solstice is uh, a high ritual, satanic, occultic day, a sacrificial day um, for witches and warlocks and the occult. Um, they do a lot of different rituals and sacrifices, and it's a big day for them for that. They fast for it. And so since that was just a week or so ago, <clears throat> um, I think we're seeing the effects of that. Because what they do is in the spirit realm. And they can attack, they can astral project, they can, uh, they organize it, and then they attack, they fight us, man. And it's it's been happening. How can you recognize if it's witchcraft or just a normal thing? That's going to be a question a lot of people have. So uh, let's say, I'll give you some examples that's happened to us. Um, and I know the witches, uh, some of them that are doing it. And because I make videos and stuff, I'm sure there's random ones that are seeing my stuff and they're like, okay, I'm going to attack that guy and see what he's about. And then people that I know that are witches, I know they want to attack too. Okay. And sometimes you'll see them, which I'll get into and how you'll see them and you'll know. I'll get into that when we get into dreams. <clears throat> uh, so let's say in the past couple of weeks, all of a sudden, uh, my wife got out of nowhere sick, but it wasn't sickness at the same time. It was like an unexplainable feeling in her body to where I figured I knew it was probably spiritual, but she ended up going to the hospital, to the ER, because uh, she couldn't really figure out what was going on. Like <clears throat> uh, Her vision started going blurry in one eye all day and random weird stuff out of nowhere. <clears throat> and then the very next day, I... I broke this bone in my hand and my hand was all swollen and it was so painful. It was throbbing and aching. And I thought I was going to have to go to the ER. I waited a day or two days to see if it would go away. And after two, it just disappeared. It would disappear through the day after prayer and all this stuff. But when you're done praying and whatever, all that stuff, you can kind of see and know that because you've been praying and it started, it lessened, but it will come back. Okay. This is an attack. This is witchcraft. Um, and everybody has been telling me their dreams have been crazy. But other ways you can tell in your physical life is you'll, you'll see sometimes all of a sudden you'll have an influx of like insects and in your like spiders, uh, earwigs, uh, ladybugs, even maybe bats in your house, uh, stuff like that. And you never had the problem before. Now all of a sudden here they are. It's, and all this stuff goes in conjunction with uh, the other things. So like, what I mean by that is... Uh, it's one thing after another, after another, after another. Like the sickness, your car tire pops. Um, you're having these weird dreams all of a sudden. You're getting hurt, uh, injured, or whatever. All the bugs or whatever. Your kids start getting sick. It's just one thing after another. You Finances are attacked and all this. And it's just boom, 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 boom. That is a good sign that there's a witchcraft attacks going on. Now, how can they, how can they get us? Okay. You got to protect your eye gates, ear gates, obviously, but there's going to be open doors in your life somewhere and they're finding them. Um, and one of these things that is because people perish for a lack of knowledge. Let's just get into that. One of the ways is your dreams. Your dreams is the spirit realm. Your spirit man does not sleep. When you were in the spirit, you were, when you were dreaming, you were in the spirit realm. And what happens in your dreams is either from God or from the enemy. And it's showing, and if it's from the enemy, it's not 
always the worst thing because it's showing you how he's attacking you. Uh, or it can be witchcraft, which is you could consider that from the enemy as well. So it's either from God, from the enemy, or from witchcraft. <clears throat> I don't believe in pizza dreams and all that stuff because your spirit's not sleeping. You're in the spirit realm. doesn't matter what you ate. When you're dreaming, you're in the spirit realm. Um, even not ever having any dreams is a, an attack on the enemy. We should have them, uh, and they should be a way God speaks to us because it's quiet, less distraction, all that stuff. But if you have none, that could be the enemy coming to kill, steal, and destroy and take them from you. So... When you, get, when you start having witchcraft dreams, you're going to see a lot of symbolism and all that works in symbolism. Uh, there is some direct things and they're going to try to be sneaky. They try to get you to come into covenant and contract with uh, whatever it is, they're, the curse or, or the spell or whatever it is they're trying to do to you or put on you. And so ways that they can do that is let's say um, <clears throat> you're having a witchcraft dream and somebody, random person, whether you know them or not, is trying to get you to eat food. Whether it's a normal food, a weird food, uh, things that you never would normally eat, but you're going to eat in this dream. And they maybe deliver it to you. Uh, it comes from somebody, whether you know them or not, in the dream. And you know it's not a dream from God. So then it's because there are stuff that would be like a banquet with God and all that. But th th I'm talking about the witchcraft dreams, the dreams you know are not from God. And so you eat something. So whatever spell or whatever curse they've put on this food is a covenant, a contract they are trying to get you to come into agreement with by you taking it, eating it, and you do that. Now you have agreed. Now that happened in the spirit realm. Whatever happens in the spirit realm will manifest in the physical realm. So now you've taken a bite of this food in the spirit realm. You've come into agreement with witchcraft covenant contract. And I'll go over how to get get this stuff off of you as well. Um, another symbol that they always like to use is dirty water and flooding and uh, like uh, toilet water, anything like that, like flooding, some sort of dirty water that is, that you've touched or you, um, is coming in your house, your car. <clears throat> they, it, a lot of marine spirit type stuff, dirty water, weird creatures. <clears throat> and I can't go through all of them because there's so much stuff. Um, and you got to keep in mind as well, too, some dreams that seem bad or from the enemy are actually from God. So this is going to take prayer and discernment, uh, and just a relationship with God to figure out what's what. And then once you start recognizing these things more and more, you'll start to know. And it'll be just like second nature. Be like, OK, I know this was from God. I know even though this one was kind of harsh is also from God because he will give you warning and tell you, show you where you're uh, going wrong in your life and the direction you need to go. And he uses symbolism. Just as God uses symbolism, which you can find these symbols to interpret these things throughout the Bible and in your own personal life. He'll use symbolism that's either in his word or that he knows you're going to know what it means. <clears throat> Sometimes he speaks direct and forefront and you'll know exactly because it's direct. But a lot of times he speaks in parables and symbols and you got to start recognizing these things. Use the word. Also, um, this is a Christian book. Uh, illustrated Dictionary of Dreams and Symbols. I know it's backwards by Dr. Joe Aboji. Um, he has a story in here, how he learned this stuff. And um, in the back is a like dictionary of words. <clears throat> and this is all biblical based. It's not the angel numbers, not the witchcraft, none of that, none of that stuff, not new age. This is Bible based from a Christian man. Um, and it's very helpful. I found it very helpful. It's helped me to learn how to read and, and interpret these symbols. And he goes through all the different kinds of dreams and all this stuff. So it's like a story with a dictionary of dream symbols and prophetic symbols in the back. And it's helped me. I've got to a point where I don't even need it all the time um, because I'm starting to recognize all these things. And it's a gift from the Lord to interpret. Joseph said in the Bible, um, interpretations are meant for the Lord. Joseph, when he's interpreting dreams, dreams, he said they are meant to be from the Lord. So you need to speak with and ask the Lord to give you the interpretation, the gift of interpretations of dreams. Um, and there's something, if you seek something good, he will not give you something bad. So you, like he said, if you ask for bread, I will not give you a stone. So you seek for something good, a gift from God. He's not going to give you in return something bad that you didn't ask for. Um, so he... 
and you're seeking according to his will. So he'll start to allow you to learn this stuff and you'll be able to have this gift. And it's very, very handy because our dreams are so important. And um, you see a lot, a lot of in your dreams, you can see a lot of death. Um, it's just regular. You can see actual witches in your dream. Okay. You, you will see witches and demons in your dreams a lot if it's witchcraft or from the enemy. But if you know, or even if you don't know the witch or warlock, when they are doing their seance and all that stuff, so, or astral projecting to come into your dreams, um, you will begin to see them randomly in your dreams. So if you see somebody, you've noticed you've seen them in multiple dreams. It won't be in every dream, but you'll start to see the same person, um, whether you know them or not, in your dreams. Um, for instance, I've had it happen to where I know the person is a witch. I know they're doing witchcraft on me and they have start and then they'll stop for a while. And then they'll start. So I'll know, I'll see that person and it, weird stuff starts happening and all that. So for me, I know it is witchcraft and this is one of the people or the, or the person that's doing it because I've seen them in the dream. They will reveal themselves or God will allow them to be revealed in the dreams so that you could combat and fight this stuff um, and stand on this stuff. So this is another problem with um, Christianity today is we don't know, many of us, a lot of us don't know how to recognize these things and how to combat and fight it or even that you have to. Because when you come into agreement, like I, I kind of got away from that for a minute, but um, like the eating the food, you've come into agreement, signing documents in a dream, signing, it will look like it's for one thing. Like here, here's a deed to a house, for instance. Uh, you sign it and the house is yours. So you sign that in the dream. Now, it might not really been for a house. There might have been fine print or whatever. So now you have come into a contract with the enemy or with the witch and warlock um, in this dream. Unless it's the Lord handing it to you or the angel of the Lord in the dream, um, I'd be very weary of signing any contract. Since you can get to a point when you pray in the Spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost and tongues, and you can get to a point where that strengthens your spirit man enough. Also, reading the Word and renewing your mind, putting off sin and repenting, and the closer relationship you get with God, the more control you will have in your dreams. I have gotten to the point where... Many times I recognize um, I recognize that it's not that it's not a dream from God in the dream. For instance, seeing dead relatives or friends in your dream that is not your dead friend or relative. Most likely, nine and a half, nine point five times out of ten, I'm not saying God can't do it, but nine point five times out of ten, it is not your friend or relative. It is a entity, a, a demon, using their astral shell. Well, that's what they that's what they call it, but it's using their likeness to uh, trick you. <clears throat> so I see my grandparents who are past in this dream. I got to the point where I'm like, you're not supposed to be here. And when you call them out in the dream, when you call them out, they freak out out. And all I do in the dreams is I say, you're not supposed to be here. And I actually said in my dream, I've done this many times, I'm dreaming in Jesus name. And I say, and boom, I wake up. It's like I get sucked through a portal and I wake up. Other times I, I realize I'm dreaming and I don't even just call them out. I just figure it out and to myself. And then I speak out loud. I don't, I don't even have to say, wake up. None of that stuff I, I, I have, but you don't have to. I just say in Jesus name, that's it. In Jesus' name. And I've woke up many times. I've had other times where I've uh, I've said it and either God spoke to me or it was my own voice. And he says, wake up. And then I, it's like I'm sucked through a portal and I'm awake. And so what you want to do when you start recognizing these things and you... Um, and, and you and you want to wake up as soon as you wake up, even if you don't remember dreams, it's good practice to wake up and say, Lord, in Jesus name, I break every covenant contract that I have made with any devil, demon, witch, warlock in the spirit realm, in my dream realm, in Jesus name. I divorce myself from every contract, every covenant um, stuff like that. And you just say it as soon as you wake up and you say, Lord, I reject that dream. Lord, I challenge those spirits. I bind and challenge those spirits in the name of Jesus. And then you can start to begin to prophesy and speak life over yourself and replacing that, which they have tried to give you the demons and the witches warlocks have tried to give you in the dream. 
Do it every day when you wake up, whether you remember your dreams or not. Everyone dreams. Whether you remember it or not is a different story of why. <clears throat> it's very good practice to write them down, but it gets to be a lot. It can be a lot. So myself, for instance, I'm just going to keep using examples of myself here. For instance, I have three, or I'd say two to four dreams every single night. 98% of nights, I have two to four dreams which I can remember a lot of things. I forget a lot of things. If I were to write all these down, I would have stacks and stacks and stacks of notebooks. It's been like this for years. I, it would be so hard to keep track um, and to, to write all that down. <clears throat> so um, if there's dreams that you just can't get it out of your head and you, and you could ask the Lord, Lord, is this something I really need to remember? And you'll just have the feeling the Holy Spirit will, will give you the unction to write it down. There are dreams you just must write down no matter what. <clears throat> but as long as you start to break these things off, recognize them, learn, ask the Lord to teach you, the Holy Spirit to teach you, get books, go in the Bible. So if you start seeing things, um, like in the Bible, let's say you see, um, Let's say you see a flood, and this is a dream from the Lord, or uh, and you see a flood. So what did the flood in the Bible mean? That was Noah, during the days of Noah, it was judgment. Judgment came upon the people. So if you see a flood, many times, if it's from the Lord, it will mean judgment. And then you put that together with the rest of the dream. There will be personal symbols that they will use, that you will know, that God will use, that you will know. Um like if you see, I don't know, for example, like a stuffed animal that belongs to your kid and it has something to do with that. And then you'll know um, by by the symbolism that that dream, even though your kid wasn't in it, you've seen the stuffed animal they always carry. That dream had something to do with your child. And then you just put it together with the rest of the dream. <clears throat> and you're going to start. I've noticed such an uptick since this eclipse and since which that's a whole nother video but the weather phenomena that has never happened before since that eclipse when many people called me and ty jackson and many others uh, uh said it was nothing and we're just blah 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 and just saying it was nothing because we were saying it's bringing a change in the earth it's a it doesn't mean something was going to happen that day but it's a sign of the times of things to come and that's going to be a next video or one here to come uh, with video and pictures to prove and facts and this, the data to prove the things that um, have never happened in tornadoes and hurricanes and all that type of stuff. And it's just how they're breaking records in many different ways. So, but that's to come. <clears throat> so the enemy is coming in to get, to give you, um, these dreams or a witch or a warlock to give you these dreams to get you into covenant. That is the point to get you into covenant and contract. So to make you stumble, um, if you have soul ties can also be another reason they're allowed to do this and it can land if you don't wake up and break it right away. Uh, and it'll get you if you, if you have sexual intercourse in a dream and you don't wake up and break it and renounce it and all that stuff, <clears throat> then now you have come into agreement with whatever entity you slept with in that dream, now you have a spirit spouse. So then you have to wake up and do it yourself or have somebody else help you to divorce yourself from the spirit spouse, renounce all those things. So the dream realm is so particular. It's, it means so much. And there's just so much to go into. Um, like for this, if you want to know about this book, for instance, let's see. And he gets the, let's just look and see some of the symbols that he uses in here. Um, like the word tares, like we, like the chaff from the wheat, tares, children of darkness, the evil ones, degenerates, deceptive, or grain. Uh, let's see what else in here. So if you see a teacher, um, depending on, now this is all just a guide. It doesn't mean this is exactly what it is. It's a guide to help you if you're struggling to know. Um, and it can go either way. It can go demonic. It can go godly and holy. So in here, teacher teacher in you see a teacher in your dream it can mean jesus christ the holy spirit a gifting from god but it could also go the other way um and a demonic teacher witchcraft teacher some sort of something that's you being taught that's bad like a lot of times if you see yourself in past places like your parents home that you grew up in if you keep seeing yourself there or schools like elementary school and high school and you're 
much graduated by now and you keep having dreams about yourself being there and taking tests or whatever you're doing there, that is most likely um, a spirit or a covenant of setback and delay in your life. It's bringing you backwards to places where you've already been, where you've already came out of, where the Lord's already taken you. Um, and so a spirit of setback and delay is trying to attack you. So you can always have these symbolisms to know how the enemy is trying to come at you by learning these things. And there's so much, but it's gets easier and easier as you do it. Another way I've had dreams where I'm dreaming and then I, I fall asleep in the dream and I have another dream. And then I fell asleep in that dream and I had another dream. I had to, the enemy was trying to get me stuck or lost or whatever. It was witchcraft for sure. I had to wake up three times in these dreams just to be awake for real. That's that's kind of scary to be honest with you. It really was. It's like you thought you're awake and you thought you're awake and you thought you're awake. Um, I think three, three deep is the long, deepest I've ever been in. And they were trying to get me to go to sleep for a fourth time in there. Try, like that movie Inception or whatever it's called that with Leonardo DiCaprio. That's like dream within a dream within a dream. It was like, what was really going on? They're trying to kill me or what? I don't know. But it was very, it was very, that one was scary. I had to have help from the Lord to wake up from that. But again, it's all about signs, symbolisms. You'll see numbers in there and letters, and you can look and see what those numbers were in the Word of God. Use the Word of God. Um, <clears throat> like if you see your, if you have something to do with body parts, like say your knees, like you, you see your knees or something's going on with your knees, that can have a, symbol, a symbolism of your prayer life because of praying on your knees, falling to your knees in worship. It has something to do with your prayer or worship li life because um, you're falling on your knees. Now, this is a guide. Remember, it's it's so hard to um, say exact for, for certain things. Some things are, are exact, but for everyone, because, uh, like I said, the each dream and individual and situation is so different for everybody, and it can mean different things. Um, so I just want to, I just want to touch base with this and just try to give you a baseline, a guideline of how to destroy, how to break this, how to come out of agreement with it. And you want to go around your house, anoint your, your family and your doorposts with, uh, anointing oil, pray over it, uh, bind and cast out every unclean spirit. Um, say, Lord, I, I, uh, Lord, if there's any witchcraft altar that's been erected against me with any of my property, uh, hair, handwritings, pictures, my address that's been put upon it, Lord, for them to do harm to me or my family. Lord, I call down judgment from heaven, just as Sodom and Gomorrah had fire come down and judge it. I too judge this altar right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it burn by fire. Let the ashes blow away like chaff in the wind. In Jesus' name, Lord, or Lord, send uh, holy angels to go and tear this down. For your son's sake, for your daughter's sake, in Jesus' name. So, so they have an altar with your picture, with your hand, with handwritings of your address, your name, and they've done some sort of uh, curse or, or seance or whatever with something that belongs to you or your likeness or your family, or your address or your vehicle or whatever. <clears throat> then now you need to. Um, if you don't know how to recognize it, which many of you won't, that's okay. You will learn that. You can learn eventually. Just attack that back. It's time for the people of God to stand up. It's time for us to stand up to fight back against these things and not let it happen anymore. Not let it happen anymore. So, but the, there's one, there's, um, there's one thing that a lot of people do, uh, that's kind of questionable. Um, some believe it, some believe in it, some don't. <clears throat> is, Lord, I send this witchcraft back to this person who's done it. Um, let it fall on their heads. Let it, let it be so unto them. They reap what they sow. All that stuff. Some say there's places in the Bible where that is okay to do. But Jesus came and he said, uh, new commands I give you. And he said, bless those that curse you. Now this is where it gets hard and tricky. But this is where you also will have extra protection from it if you're praying for their salvation. The ones who themselves have come to curse you and to hurt you and your family. You break that junk off. Come out of agreement with it. And then bless those that curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. The right out of the mouth of Jesus. 
And if some people think that there are certain times for that and there's certain times to send it back and all that stuff, I believe um, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk because if you really don't know, then just love them. The hard thing, love your enemy and pray for them, pray for their salvation. And you can even, if it, if it really, you really must say, Lord, I forgive this person for them doing this to me and my family, this witchcraft, after you've already broke it, say, I forgive them, Lord. I pray for their salvation. Lord, but if they continue and they will not come to repentance, then Lord, you avenge me. That is not out of line. You're doing your part to love them. You're doing your part to pray for them and to bless them and to pray for their salvation. But he knows if they're going to repent or not. If they're going to continue this stuff, you've got to put your foot down. You've got to, men especially, men of God, parents, you got to protect your children. you got to protect your family, your wives. <clears throat> wives, hold up your men. You guys got to get it together. Pray for each other constantly. You need to be praying for each other daily, daily. Reading the word daily. Renewing your mind. Getting in the spirit. Praying in the spirit realm. Holy Ghost fire. <laughs> Pray with tongues. And these things will build it to where some of these things will come at you when they will not be able to land. But the more you get with the Lord and the more you uh, study in the word, the more you'll be able to recognize the symbols and to interpret. But it is time that we stand up and we fight back in some way, in some way. And the hard part is to love your enemy, to do it in love. But Jesus did it. We already have the victory. Our love, we are, we're already dead to ourselves. We should be dead to ourselves. Can't pick up our cross, die daily. So it shouldn't really technically matter if the gospel is going forth. If you're praying for somebody, it shouldn't matter what you go through, the persecution that you have to go through because we're just passing through here. Our home's up there. So we forgive them, pray for their salvation, and it shouldn't matter what they've done to us. Just like how Jesus took it. Just how like Paul took persecution and all the disciples and many other people um, throughout the history. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Now I want to pray for you guys. If there's any questions, uh, concerns, comments, put them in the, put them, put them in the comment section. Um, prayer requests, all that stuff. Put it in the comment section. Please share this out. I'm going to pray here real quick. Um, but p please share this stuff out, especially people you know that are having weird dreams. Um, and maybe we can get this. So also another thing, I want to add this real quick. Um, and I'll probably make another video on this. But Facebook's getting to the place where they're actually paying out to people who are content creators. I was thinking about this, like, and I've seen it on TikTok. People were doing it. Like, if you're a Christian and you see a digital creator, somebody else who is a Christian, um, then even if you really want to watch their stuff or not, just click it and watch it for like 30 seconds. Click the like button, even share it. And now they're getting these views and this content to help push out the gospel. Plus now the world of Facebook, the world's paying them to preach the gospel. Now their heart, where it's at with the money and with God and all that, with their, if they're doing it for the gospel or if they're doing it to get paid, that's between them and God. That's not your problem. But we can do our part. You reap what you sow. So other content creators, you see this um, and you start hitting like and share and all that stuff and commenting for my stuff or for somebody else's stuff, you're going to reap what you sow and you'll get it from other people. And we all need to work together and come together and let Facebook, let YouTube, let TikTok, let the world pay us to preach the gospel. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. We're not supposed to live like bums. You don't have to. You just have your heart clean. And I'm not saying you got to be a millionaire or any of that, but have your heart clean. But, you know, bills are getting hard to pay nowadays, too. Just have help each other out by sharing and watching the content for 30 seconds, getting the views and likes up, commenting, get the algorithm flowing for other brothers and sisters in Christ. We can take this stuff over as much as possible and allow Facebook and YouTube and all them to, to pay wages to us so our bills will be paid for preaching the gospel. The worker is worthy of his hire. He's worthy of his wage. But I'm sure some people are going to talk crap about me for even saying that. It was just an idea. Uh, I just thought it would be kind of cool if we all came together in unity and let them pay. Uh, let, let the Facebook and all them help us with extra income and this crap economy and all this stuff. Why not? The gospel's going forth, though. That's the main thing. And it helps 
the algorithm for the gospel, for people to be saved. So let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you will use me for these type of things. Lord, I pray that many people have ears to hear, hearts to receive, so they can understand now, Lord. Help give them understanding and knowledge and wisdom regarding dreams and witchcraft. And Lord, that they may know how to stand up, to fight against it, to combat it. Lord, I come against all witchcraft, every covenant, contract, curse, and spell, and voodoo that's been put upon my brothers and sisters and in their dream realm life, Lord. Uh, we break that power right now in Jesus' name. All witchcraft power must fail over my brothers and sisters now in Jesus' mighty name. I command it to loose them. Loose them, come off them. Every unclean spirit that's attached themselves because of witchcraft, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Leave them, leave their house, leave their children, their families now in Jesus' name. Come off their finances, come off their vehicle, come off uh, all their belongings in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast you to the pit. Go in Jesus' name. Lord, we do the hard thing and we forgive those who have come against us. Lord, who have done this witchcraft to us. And Lord, we pray they repent. We pray for their soul, that you do whatever it takes to bring them to your kingdom, to, to uh, Jesus Christ, to the knowledge and the wisdom of Jesus Christ so that they are saved and they can be with us in the heaven, Lord. But Lord, if they will not repent, you please avenge us, Lord. Vengeance is yours, not ours. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you can teach us these things. We thank you that we can come together on social media to uh, teach and uplift one another. <clears throat> and Lord, I pray this reaches those who need to hear it and who it will benefit. And Lord, I pray uh, lastly that you receive all glory, not me, not any of them. Lord, the glory is yours. I could not do this, would not be here without you, Lord. I love you. We love you. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, we put our lives in your hands. We put our dreams in your hands. We put our souls and spirits in your hands. <clears throat> and Lord, I come against every dream that comes from witches, warlocks, or the enemy. In Jesus' name, for me and my family and my brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that you block them right now. Block them tonight. Let tonight be a night with you speaking to us, Lord. We ask and pray for you, Lord, to speak to your body, that those that hear this in your body of Christ, Lord, you speak to us tonight in our dreams. A night where the enemy cannot come in. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for it. I can't wait to get together with my brothers and sisters to see what you've shown us because you show us in part, we know in part. And we can bring this together to have a bigger picture. Reveal to us the things that are coming, please, Lord. Reveal to us how we can prepare. Prepare one another, helping each other. Reveal to us your plans for this time. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to you, Lord, Father, God. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. So, yeah, any questions, comments, put them in the uh, comment section. Uh, share this out, like, follow, subscribe, do all the things. Let's help each other out. Um, I love you guys. I pray this bless you. Glory to God. In Jesus name. Amen.